Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining me today on Newsmakers. Well, we're in a big election year 2020 in the summer. We've had an early summer election and we have more coming up. And joining me today is Charlie Davis, Jasper County Clerk. Thank you for being cool. here today. Thank you for letting me be with you. An unusual election year with everything that's happening around the country. I imagine uh, that's really affecting your office. It, it, it has affected. Uh, when I was a freshman legislator in Jefferson City, that was the year that the tornado hit Joplin. Mm -hmm. And now as a freshman county clerk, we have COVID-19. So uh, I've been put through uh, some trials. Uh, and uh, But at the end of the day, uh, things are going to be good. Uh, mm -hmm. And the of course, COVID-19 has created some issues with our elections across the state of Missouri. Uh, the governor did, I think, did a, a good job of making some recommendations and changing the date of the election. But uh, at the end of the day, it was a very successful election. Uh, and uh, we're moving on to the August election now. So the June election was really kind of a chance to try things out the first time you've had to do an election under the pandemic type situation. Absolutely, yeah, and that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, and that's one of the things that I stress with our poll workers. Most people don't understand. We have about 200 people that work any given election. Mm -hmm. 184 poll workers, 46 locations, uh, and four poll workers at each location. Uh, and it was a, a trial run uh, with the pandemic going on. Uh, one of the things that I did, I provided the face masks, uh, face shields, mm -hmm. gloves, hand sanitizer, uh, disinfectant, uh, and styluses uh, for everybody to use. Uh, not everybody used everything that they should have, but out of 184 people plus about 12 extra workers, we had no individual uh, report to me that uh, they got uh, a, or they were exposed no to COVID-19 mm -hmm. uh, and subsequently have it. Uh, so I'm, I count ourselves very blessed especially when you realize that the vast majority of our poll workers are senior citizens mm -hmm. that are the, in the category of being high risk, right. and none of them uh, were uh, infected by COVID-19. And I think that goes to show that uh, they did really uh, a good job making sure that uh, it was a clean environment. Uh, and it was only a 10.7% turnout. Right. So <laughs> that is a, that's a little bit smaller than mm -hmm. we're anticipating uh, for August, but it was a good test run, and it was a very successful test run too. So keeping the poll workers safe, what about the voters coming in? Uh, absolutely. One of the biggest things, and you know, I kind of got uh, laughed at a little bit because of the styluses that we used. Right, we uh, had the, the I voted in Dent, Dent County. County. <laughs> Uh, and of course, those that understand what happened, uh, we ordered those pens uh, specifically for uh, that June election. Mm -hmm. But because of COVID-19, there was a delay in the manufacturing process. Right. Uh, we pack our ballot bags the Thursday before the election, so that way everything can be delivered on Monday and we are set, ready to go. Gives us a couple of days if there's a problem. Well. Right. Thursday came and we did not have the styluses. Mm -hmm. Friday came and we still don't have the styluses. And I, I made a promise to every one of our voters that I was going to have the styluses there. So that way you could walk into the polling location and not have to touch anything. You could vote and walk out uh, and not, not having to have physical You're contact with anything. With Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made the decision that uh, we were going to use them. They were, they were wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. The Friday afternoon, uh, even after we were done packing the bags, uh, we were delivered 10,000 of these <laughs> styluses nice that says, I voted in Denton County. Mm -hmm. And I called the county clerk in Denton County and I said, uh, please tell me that you got your uh, styluses today. And she said, they did. I asked her how many you got, 10,000, amazing, same number we ordered. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked her, uh, can you go open up a box and tell me that it says I voted in Jasper County? Because if it says that I am driving to Denton <laughs> County <laughs> trade. and we'll trade, <laughs> well, she comes back and uh, no, they all said, there's a it all said Dent County and there was a manufacturing error mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we worked with the manufacturer and uh, we got to use those pens for uh, very little cost right. uh, and I think it was very successful because when you look at the the process that we did uh, a voter could come in show their ID driver's license and not mm -hmm. have to hand it to anybody right and scan it in we get the ballot type we ask them um, in in August case is going to be you're going to get to choose right, whether Republican, party, Democrat, right. whatever party that you want to choose. Uh, but this one, we handed them the ballot. They walked. We handed them the stylus. They mm -hmm. walked over to the voting booth. They voted, put the stylus in their pocket, put the, the ballot, the in ballot the box into and... the tabulator and walked out. They didn't have to touch anything uh, that anybody else would have touched other than the ballot itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think that was one of the things that uh, kept the contact between potential uh, infected individuals uh, from our uh, poll workers and then also protected our voters. Uh, okay. and, and I think it was very successful. 
do you see, we hear a lot about social distancing. I mean, we are spent a card in the set right now. Mm -hmm. As far as people asking in August, are you going to have people as they're waiting in line to get there? Well, absolutely. And, and one of the things that uh, we did in April, which is really June, mm -hmm. uh, we actually did have the social distancing markers on the floor. Right. We got posters. The Jay Ashcroft, our Secretary of State, did a real good job of making sure all of the local election authorities had social distancing posters. Mm -hmm. We had posters put up. We had these yellow markers put on the ground, stand just like here, just like here. at uh, the Harvard of the Midwest, Missouri mm -hmm. Southern State University. You go down any of the hallways, there's blue markers, markers. Uh, mm -hmm. for social distancing. We had the same thing. and. I think right now people are at the point where they're used to it, uh, and I think people, when they go to the polls, uh, are being doing the due diligence to make sure that they're social distancing, because okay. nobody wants to affect anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I, again, I'll reiterate the fact that we didn't have anybody infected because of the elections. Doesn't mean we haven't seen an increase in our numbers, but it had nothing to do with the elections, et cetera. And so forth. Great. So some changes that people will be seeing. Um, the voting booths that you have, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes some elections, there are more people than there are booths. Some places put out tables, you know, for we, voting. Of course, we, we will have, we will have tables. Or, uh, the August election is not going to be quite as busy as the November election. Right. November's uh, a big you know, one. <laughs> we, we are predicting that the no November election will be the largest election in U.S. history mm -hmm. uh, just because of the, the demographics oh, of the uh, what's mm -hmm. going to be on the ballot. Uh, so it's going to be very busy. Uh, that's why uh, I am printing 100% of the ballots. Uh, people say, well, why don't you always print 100% of the ballots? Well, we have about 80,000 registered voters in Jasper County. If we printed 80,000 ballots every election, uh, and we only had 10.7% of the people turn out in the April election, we would have spent tens of thousands of taxpayer money uh, unwisely. Uh, so what we do is we, we estimate uh, mm -hmm. the number of people that are going to come out and vote, and then we pad it by a little bit, plus we have our absentee ballots. So in case one of our polling locations runs low, we do have spares that we can take so can go out. go back and bring them out. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're not going to have as many uh, in August as we're going to have in November, but uh, it is going to be a larger turnout. Uh, and uh, because of that, we are already more, ordering more ballots than usual for August, uh, and uh, especially November. Now, August, they're by parties, so you Correct. probably have to estimate, you know, how many Republican, how many Democrat, <laughs> how many Green Party. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have great staff. Uh, the ladies that are in my office uh, have done it for years, uh, and uh, I totally rely on them, and mm -hmm. I trust their judgment. They will tell me on Election Day, Charlie, it's going to be okay, because I'm the type of individual that uh, I want everything to run perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get a little bit nervous. Uh, what happens if you run out? Because Jasper County, there was one time in our history that we actually did run out of ballots. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was um, a very difficult time mm -hmm. uh, for the county clerk at the time and for the poll workers and the election workers. Uh, and I don't want to do that because I don't want to put those you don't want uh, people to show up those the staff and say, members. Well, I don't have that one. Wait a minute, we'll Absolutely. get one for you. <laughs> but at the same time, we don't want to waste taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do. We base uh, on previous elections. Right. Uh, sometimes we overestimate. I've never underestimated yet. Uh, we've got the opportunity to, to run several elections since I was elected right. a county clerk. Uh, but we, we don't want to waste money, but we do want to make sure that uh, when anybody gets to the polls, they have the opportunity to vote. And you're correct. We will have Republican, Democrat, Green, Libertarian, and Constitution, mm -hmm. and uncommitted mm -hmm. or independent ballots. The independent ballots are just the uh, the issues that are going to be voted on. Oh, okay. There's no people on the ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just the constitutional measures or the ballot initiatives. Uh, but it's going to be, uh, like I told you earlier, we have 35 different ballot types this election cycle based on where you live. Uh, mm -hmm. So it can be a, a little bit cumbersome. Uh, mm -hmm. Last month we had 57 different ballot types. Because there are so many municipalities and school yeah, districts. So many and municipalities, so many school districts. So mm -hmm. we're kind of looking forward to November. It's going to be large numbers, Everybody but the same thing. one ballot uh, <laughs> right. makes it very easy for our poll workers and for our staff. Right. Well, let's talk about how people can find out, you know, there's different ballots, what poll they go to. I know you have some websites, so let's start off with giving some information. You have a Jasper County Clerk's sure. website a as Absolutely. Well. Uh, one of the most important things that we can do is to make sure, uh, like our founding father said, we need to have an educated electorate. And you get educated by having the information provided to you. Mm -hmm. So if you go to jaspercounty.org, uh, on the very front page towards the bottom, there is a box that says elections. You can click on that election box uh, and you can actually click on uh, a link that will take you to the secretary's website where you put in your physical address where you live and it will pull up the ballot that you're going to get, the information that is going to be on the ballot, which is very good news because if somebody calls our office 
uh, right now, I can show them, well, here's the 35 different ballot types that are going to be on the ballot uh, in August. So uh, we can see on yeah. the map or the draw, sure. the, the clicks here. You, so click on yeah. the image to see. And uh, yeah. yeah, so so on the, the very top uh, selection, right above the Missouri flag, there's mm -hmm. a link that you could actually choose. Scroll up a little bit. Uh, and see, yeah. And, uh, yeah, click here for the see yeah, click candidates. Here, click here or the image to see candidate and the ballot information based on your voting address. Mm -hmm. It makes it very nice because uh, when you put in your address, it specifically shows you where your uh, where you live and what the ballot is going to going to be, what ballot type, and then it's going to show you what's going to be on your particular ballot. Uh, right now, we're not 100% sure if uh, it's up online just yet uh, mm -hmm. because the ballots for August were just printed and, uh, and all that information was just sent to the secretary. This is an example of a sample ballot that would pop you, up. You bet. There, mm -hmm. Another link that is on that same page is sample ballots. Uh, as you can see, we have a BT1 that's a ballot type 1. We mm -hmm. have all the way up to BT35. Uh, it would be very difficult because you could be in the city limits of Joplin, be in, be in Carl Junction School District, mm -hmm. but your neighbor across the street be in the city limits of Joplin in Joplin schools. But the lines don't run straight. The lines the city are not 100 percent right? straight. Mm -hmm. So this sometimes uh, looking at these type of sample ballots, even though it is all correct, it's difficult for the individual voter to know which one is theirs. Right. They can call our office. We can tell them that it's ballot BT12. Mm -hmm. They can look at BT12 on the website and actually see it. So there is a way uh, if you don't want to actually put your information in the website. But, so uh, when they go to the poll and they show their uh, license or their voter registration card, that will tell the poll workers they yes. need such and such. A, you, you, know, you, know, you know, technology, for 30 years I owned a computer store in Joplin, mm -hmm. so I love technology. Uh, and the way that we do things now with the poll pads, having the camera to be able right. to identify the voter to make sure that that is the individual that's there, uh, as well as the technology for it to show uh, the poll worker what ballot type that they get, because everything is tied with the Missouri Centralized Voter uh, Registration Database, which mm -hmm. is controlled by the Secretary of State and a company that we use called No Ink for the poll pads. Uh, and it and it alleviates. If you remember, uh, you and I are old enough that yeah, you remember those big old books. <laughs> flipping through the book, and, yes, and, yeah. and grandma's flipping through the book, trying mm -hmm. to find your name. And you, you're talking about like in, a COVID -19 issue, in a COVID nineteen issue. In a COVID nineteen issue now, yeah. to have a book and, and touching everybody's it. touching it, uh, mm -hmm. not good. But our poll pads, the poll worker can touch it. Mm -hmm. The voter can sign with the pen and not actually have to touch it. Right. Uh, much more sanitary uh, way of doing it. Uh, but but the technology has made it very easy for people to find out how uh, how to vote, or where to vote, uh, and what the ballot is, as long as people are willing to do it. Put that effort in beforehand. You have to put the effort in. Uh, what's difficult is, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that we had a 10.7% turnout for the April election. Mm -hmm. My staff in our offices, the Joplin office and our Joplin office, we have to put the same amount of effort in a 10% turnout as we do a 100% turnout. Right. Uh, just more ballots have to be printed in those bigger elections. But the amount of time that it takes to set things up and the work, the number of workers we have, it's the same. Right. You're going to say the same number of poll workers. Sure. You have. Absolutely. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I would wish everybody would get out and vote. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my job is to make sure that every registered voter that is a legal voter has the opportunity to vote and make sure their voice is counted at every election. And that's what we do. If 10 percent show up or 100 percent show up, uh, our job is to make sure everybody has the opportunity. Well, let's talk about the registered aspect because mm -hmm. um, we, we're recording this program in June. People are saying August is coming up. What if we still haven't registered yet? We have viewers that say, oh, I, I've moved or I haven't registered. What do I need to do to register? Absolutely. Uh, we, we do ask that the easiest way to make sure is you can actually go to the Secretary of State, the sos.mo.gov mm -hmm. website, and you can check your registration to see if you're registered to vote. But... We always encourage people call our office. Our office is staffed with some of the best workers, and I guarantee you, you call up, we can tell you with 100% accuracy whether right you're registered to vote, <laughs> where your polling location is going to be, and mm -hmm. what is going to be on your ballot type. So we encourage people to call our office. And if you're not registered to vote, we uh, are asking people to make sure uh, that you register. Uh, we have uh, sheets on the Secretary of State's website right. uh, that tells people when uh, they need to register. Um, July 22nd by 5 p.m. is the deadline to request an absentee ballot. You know, we're going to talk right. about we're absentee talking, ballots right. and mail-in mm -hmm. ballots. But you have to be registered uh, before you can request it? Uh, absolutely. You right. have to be registered. Uh, and I believe the August date is July 8th. So uh, you need so, to do that pretty soon. So we've, yeah. got, we've got a couple weeks left, but mm -hmm. uh, we encourage people to make sure that you uh, come to our office to register to vote. 
some people will go online, mm-hmm. uh, but sometimes between mail delays, etc., uh, it makes it difficult to ensure that we get it on time. And the last thing I want to do is tell a voter, we're sorry we didn't get your information because Something A, B, C, or D, right? the, mail, the mail didn't <laughs> mm-hmm. get to us. Uh, so the easiest thing to do is come to our office. Uh, we can get you registered Better immediately. Fill out that form and do it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Bring, bring in a, a photo ID so you can mm-hmm. identify where you live, etc. You will not get a voter, regi- a voter ID card immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way that the system is set up, you come to our office, you fill out the voter registration card, you mark the box that you excuse me, that you are a U.S. citizen because you are required to be a U.S. citizen to vote in U.S. elections. And we take that and we mail you uh, a piece of paper. And what that does is that verifies the address before we start mailing so you out want to make cards. Sure that's a legitimate address. That Absolutely, they right. because there are times that people will accidentally write down the wrong address, and if we get that mail returned to us, then we mm-hmm. can investigate why. So why was it a mistake, or was it somebody who was fraudul- fraudulently trying mm-hmm. to register and they're really not? And that's uh, part of your responsibility as clerk to make sure the people Absol- are legitimate Absolutely. voters. Absolutely, <laughs> uh, and you know, there's a whole big issue about uh, immigration uh, mm-hmm. in our state, uh, but our country, but even in our community. Uh, you know, my job is to make sure that uh, everybody who is eligible to vote has the opportunity to register. Uh, and sometimes we have to tell somebody that they can't register mm-hmm. to vote because they're not a U.S. citizen. Uh, and we have never had anybody upset. They're like, oh, OK, but I'm, I'm working on it. I've got my citizenship. Uh, yeah, right. I'm, I've got my citizenship paperwork mm-hmm. uh, being worked on. So if we can encourage them to do that, then, then great. Uh, but uh, come to our office and we can make sure. Uh, and like I said, July 8th, I believe, is the, the cutoff for, the for Mm-hmm. for the August election, so uh, it's, time's going to be here pretty quick. And you have those voter ID cards. Some people may mm-hmm. think, do I have to have that when I go to the polls? If you don't, you don't, you don't have to have it, uh, but, but here's, here's the reason we ask people to either bring your driver's license or the voter ID card. Mm-hmm. It makes the process very quick. Uh, and very painless. They have a barcode or something. They got a barcode. They got a barcode on it that actually, just like on the back of your driver's license, mm-hmm. that actually has the scanning, uh, the uh, the barcode on it that we scan in, and it pulls up the information very quickly. Uh, otherwise, especially August, and but especially November, when we're going to have long lines, mm-hmm. if you don't have identification, now we've got somebody that has to manually look you up in the poll pad. Mm. If they don't find you, they got to get on the phone, call our office, and we're logged into the Secretary of State's database, and we have to do that. Uh, sometimes you're talking several minutes, five, so ten minutes. So they're doing that, other people are waiting in line behind a- them absolutely. saying, I just that's correct. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's why we ask people, have your voter ID card with you or your mm-hmm. driver's license. Mm-hmm. That way you can come in, you can get processed, you can uh, vote to do your constitutional a duty to vote uh, and uh, leave the premises without having to touch anything in a very quickly uh, manner. Okay. One other thing for the August ballot, uh, we mentioned you know, the ballot specific to parties. In Missouri, you don't declare that party until you walk into the polling place. Correct. Well, Some we, states around us, you have to declare your party correct. when you register. We have, uh, well, Missouri is not a closed primary state. Mm-hmm. Uh, closed par- primary means when you register to vote, then you register by party. Uh, You know, there's a movement sometimes one way or the other, uh, but let me tell you how that would uh, hurt Jasper County. Uh, You know, Jasper County is predominantly a more conservative county uh, Mm -hmm. in Missouri. Uh, I always have run on a Republican uh, ticket. Uh, I'm a Republican, but I have a large number of Democratic friends that that like Charlie Davis, that want to support Charlie Davis. Mm -hmm. Uh, If they were registered by party, then when they went to the polls, they couldn't they support the candidate. Mm-hmm. They couldn't support Charlie Davis. They had would have to pick up a Democratic ballot. Uh, so, you know, I'm not for a closed primary system. Uh, I think uh, people should have the opportunity to choose uh, yeah. who they want to vote for during the primary. So that day when they go to vote, they can yeah. say, I want that Republican Absolutely. or I want the and Green it, Party. And it's, or... the, and it's the inverse effect in St. Louis City, Jackson County, Kansas City, mm-hmm. where you have predominantly uh, Democratic, Democratic districts. Mm-hmm. And if a Republican goes to the poll, they know that a Republican is not going to win. So for them to vote a Republican ticket in that Democratic that area, Democratic right? area uh, it, it, it would be, I'm not going to say it's a wasted vote because no vote is wasted. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you also have to think, too, that uh, on these ballots, uh, you're going to have Republicans running against each other for mm-hmm. treasurer, primaries, secretary races, of state, right. mm-hmm. a gubernatorial election. Uh, I believe everything except for the lieutenant governor and auditor is up for... All those statewide no, no, offices. The, the, the lieutenant governor is up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it may be just the auditor, which is... Uh, 
coming up in two so years. And a, one other race. Off the cycle of this yeah. year. So this, this is a cycle where we have a lot of our statewides uh, running. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important to make sure that uh, you get to the polls and do your research. You know, you brought up that point earlier. Right. Do your research about the candidates prior to going to the polls. Because uh, if you don't, you stand there. You know, nobody at the polls can help you. No, you don't know uh, who those people and, are and, and what the and, questions are. And we instruct our poll workers, and we have training before every election, and we instruct mm -hmm. them, you are not allowed to assist a voter unless, number one, they're asked, but you are not allowed to read into uh, anything on the ballot. any of those uh, questions. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, one of the big questions people are asking probably, we've heard about the mail-in voting and absentee voting, voting. So explain what that means as far as the differences or what, how okay. it applies to them. Course, August uh, and November. For of course, uh, the mail-in voting uh, is primarily just for this year, mm -hmm. the August and November election, as well as the seventh reason why you're going to vote absentee uh, is only for this year. Okay. So if you're, if you're not going to be in town, or if you're confined due to illness, and that's primarily if you're in the hospital mm -hmm. uh, or you're under doctor's orders to stay at home, uh, or if your religious belief uh, does not allow you to go to the polls. Uh, but there's a seventh one that was passed by the legislature this year, and that is COVID-19 related. If you are in a high-risk category for COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, which is you're over 65 years of age, you live in a long-term uh, care facility, uh, you have chronic lung disease or asthma, have a serious heart condition, you are immunocompromised, uh, your immune system is compromised, you have diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and are undergoing dialysis or have liver disease. If you fall in any one of those categories, then you have the ability to vote absentee without a notary. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, the whole purpose that they wanted to do that is to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to vote and right. those that may not be able to because they're under doctor's orders or they are at a much higher risk to the exposure and to contract so COVID-19. So they don't have to go into that public polling Correct. Place they don't have to go into the public. Right. Even though, like I said earlier, we never had, we have not had any mm -hmm. issues. Uh, so we're, we're very clean. Uh, but if somebody is concerned about that, then they have the opportunity to vote absentee uh, and they can call us. They can send us a letter, they can send us a fax uh, to request that absentee ballot, and we're more than happy to make sure that uh, they get it. So your office will mail that out to the address they give yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Now, here, here's, here's another thing, though. Uh, they call us up and ask us to get an absentee ballot. We will send them a letter in the mail for the request. Again, to make sure that the address so that it is on file, process, right? it is a two-step two -step process to make sure that there's no shenanigans, hanky-panky going on. Mm -hmm. So that uh, voter will actually get a letter from us. They will choose the reason why they're requesting uh, the ballot. They will sign it, send it back to us, mm -hmm. and then we will send them their absentee ballot. As a matter of fact, July 22nd at 5 p.m. is the deadline to request an absentee ballot for the August election. So they have to have that lean time. To they get have that. to have the lean time. And, and, and again, if you think July 22nd, that is uh, less than two weeks before the election. Mm -hmm. uh, our U.S. Postal Service does a fantastic job. But sometimes things sometimes get lost. Sometimes that two-day delivery, it takes three or four. It takes three or four. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or uh, we had a case uh, in Jasper County where we had something take two weeks to get to us from Jefferson City. Mm. And unfortunately, the day that we got it, uh, it had expired uh, so. for what had to be done. Mm -hmm. So we still recommend, even though you have until July 22nd at 5 p.m. to request it, come by our office. And as a matter of fact, if you're going to come by our office to request it, you can absentee vote there, because either in Joplin. In the office, do it in person. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In our Joplin office at 601 Pearl, room 200, mm -hmm. or the Carthage office in the courthouse, room 103. Come by. You can absentee vote even today for the August election. What are the hours for your office? Our yeah. office is open 830 to 430. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the uh, Saturday prior to the election, we're going to be open from 8 to noon. Okay. So you can you can vote uh, absentee uh, the Saturday before the election. Mm -hmm. And the Joplin office is in the courthouse building. Yeah, so Joplin, Joplin office is in the court's building, mm -hmm. not the courthouse. Courthouse, court's building, right. <laughs> that's courthouse all, that's all in Carthage, the right. Yeah. yeah, now we got a new court's building uh, being built uh, <laughs> right, so. very soon. Uh, but the courthouse in Carthage, mm -hmm. uh, either location, you're more than welcome to come vote absentee. Okay, so that's something that people have been doing and for we, years. And, and we, do, we do ask people to be patient. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with the COVID-19 issue, uh, 
going on. Sometimes we have to close an office uh, because the, the courts may be shut down and they ask us to close the office because mm -hmm. maybe they have to clean right. because there was a positive case or something. Uh, so you can always call the office to make sure that we're there. Uh, but the Carthage office has not been closed one day uh, during this whole pandemic. Uh, we have stayed open uh, because I believe it is our duty to make sure that we're there to allow people to vote absentee and to register to vote. And if we're closed, kind of hard for them to do that. Right. You can't come in and do it if it's not there. Right. So, so really, August is a good chance for your system, once again, to make sure that we're in place for the big November. And I'm sure, sure we'll talk again before November and what's mm -hmm. going to happen at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, mainly, as you've been stressing the opportunity for people to vote. That they sure. Have that and and, and that's, that's our job. Uh, you know, whether 1% or 100% turnout, uh, our job is to make sure everybody who wants to has that opportunity. Some nations you're required to vote. Right. You know, you, you have it's the thumb, you must go. thumb yeah. put it in the purple ink. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are some uh, nations in the Middle East that do that. Uh, but our country just gives you the opportunity. Uh, but think of the, think of the last election, 10.7% turned out. That means one out of 10 individuals chose who was going to be on your school board, who was mm -hmm. going to run your schools. One out of 10 chose who was going to be on the city councils to run your city. One out of 10 chose the ballot measures, the, the bond extension, mm -hmm. sales tax, and property tax uh, issues. So one in 10. Uh, I wish more people would turn out because uh, at, least, at least if you have a plurality of people, then a majority of the people made the decision rather than a few. So you're looking forward to the potential of maybe 100% of those ballots really being needed in November. Personally, I am. I don't know if my staff or the poll <laughs> workers are too excited about that, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the November election, uh, you know, my job is a nonpartisan job as county clerk. When I was in the legislature, it was partisanship, right. uh, you know, the, the fighting, the, the arguing, the bickering. Mm -hmm. uh, now I just enforce the laws that the legislature creates. And for me to be able to participate in one of the greatest systems that uh, this world has ever seen, uh, and to be prepared for the November election to see a large turnout. I'm looking forward to that day because I'm going to be going from poll to poll, talking to people, thanking them for exercising their, their right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just going to be a, a, a great event. Uh, regardless of the turnout, America will still be here the day after and <laughs> right. years after that. Uh, so I, I'm, I am really looking forward to it. Great. Well, Charlie, I'd like to thank you very much for coming to the program today and getting us ready for the upcoming August and looking down the road to November as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Look forward to coming back and talking about the November election. Sounds great. Well, thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the viewers for joining us this week. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join me again next week at the same time on this station. We'll see you then.